hello everyone welcome to my youtube channel my name is precious and in this video we'll quickly look at uh, some beautiful problems under permutations and combination this one and this other one okay so now this one says we should find r assuming the ratio on the left hand side is equal to the ratio on the right hand side it's a very quick one and what are we going to use just apply definition and what's the definition of permutation it says that if I have n permutation r, that it is the same as n factorial all over n minus r factorial. So the implication is that if I do that here, I'm going to have 16 factorial all over 16 minus r minus 1 all factorial this way. And that will be ratio. Remember that ratio can also be represented as division so here I will now have this one is the same thing as 15 factorial all over 15 minus r minus 1 factorial okay so and this is equal to on this side we will now have 16 all over 7 so what does that give us so we'll try to simplify what we have in the bracket of the denominators so this is the same thing as 16 factorial all over. Uh, so this is going to give us 16. And then if you open this bracket, uh, let me let me go back a little bit. If you open this bracket, you're going to have 16. And then you have minus r plus 1. And 16 plus 1 is 17. And then we now have minus r all factorial. And then I want to change this to multiplication. So this one will now invert. It will come up. And when it comes up, the same thing will happen. Minus, minus will be plus. So we have 16 here. Then minus R factorial. And that is all over 15 factorial that is up initially. So which is equal to 16 all over 7. And so what are we going to do here? We will see that from what we have here now, I can actually, um, you know, try to, simplify this denominator and why am i going to simplify the denominator because i know that the denominator here is greater than the numerator here and so if i simplify this inside it i'm going to get 16 how because by the simplification of this in fact let's do it here we'll have anyway i will also simplify the numerator here so i'll have 16 times 15 factorial so i'll stop there because on this side i have 15 and it can cancel so on this one, I'm going to have 17 minus r multiplied by, then I'm going to remove 1 from this. And if I remove 1, this 17 will reduce to 16. And then you still have minus r factorial. And this is multiplied by, here we will now have the same 16 minus r. We are not changing it because we have something below that can help us remove it. And we are also not changing this one. And that is equal to 16 all over 7. So what will happen now is that, of course, this will take away this. And 15 factorial will take away 15. So, um, of course, what we we'll now have will now be 16 all over 17 minus r to be equal to 16 on the right-hand side all over 7. Of course, the 16 here can take away the 16 here. So we we'll just have 1, 1. And so when we cross multiply now, we are going to have that uh, 1 times 7 is 7 is equal to 17 minus r squared. So if our r comes this side, we have 17 minus 7. Therefore, our r is equal to 10. A very beautiful one. Okay, so and uh, I want us to take this before the second one that I showed us. So what are we going to have here? Now, in this case, we are told that n permutation r is equal to 3024. So what am I expected to do? Remember, I keep saying, do what you know how to do. And what do you know how to do? By definition, we know that n permutation r means n factorial all over n minus r factorial. So I'll start with that. And it is equal to my 3024. I can call this equation 1. And then from the equation 2, uh, n combination r means n factorial all over n minus r factorial 
multiplied by r factorial and they said is equal to 126 equation 2 so whenever you have two equations this way now one of the things you can do is if it is something you can solve simultaneously using any of the simultaneous equation approach then good but if not you then the next thing you can do is to try division if i divide equation one by equation two am i going to get anything reasonable let's see okay so if i divide equation one by two i'm going to have n factorial all over n minus r factorial divided by so the right hand side would, would, would be divided by the right hand side of the equation 2 which is n factorial all over n minus r factorial times r factorial to now be equal to then sorry the left hand side then the right hand side now will also divide the right hand side that is 3024 will now divide 126 okay so now, what is this one? Meanwhile, why did I divide equation one by two? It doesn't mean you cannot divide equation two by one. You will get the same thing. But I chose to divide one by two because the right-hand side of one is greater than the right-hand side of two. So that would give me, you know, a whole number. But even if I turn it the other way, I will still get the same solution. So what am I going to do here? Now, I'll change the multiplication to, uh, uh, sorry, the division to multiplication. Uh, let's see what we will have. If you change this one now, you are going to have that this will now come up. So I have n minus r factorial, r factorial, all over n factorial. And this is still equal to, now, sorry, when you divide the 3024 by 126, you will get 24. Okay, so at this point, can something happen here? Yes, our n factorial will take away this. This will take away this. So we have only r factorial left to be equal to 24. And we know that 24 is the same thing as 4 factorial. So you would need to learn some of these factorials at least 2 to 10. Uh, let me not, it may not get up to 10, maybe 2 to 6 of, you know, stuff like that. You should know 2 factorial is 2, 3 factorial is 6, 4 factorial is 24. 5 factorial is 120, and so on. 6 factorial is 720, you know. At least you should know up to this point. And that's how you are able to get this. And so if r factorial is equal to 4 factorial, it means that r is equal to 4. So my r is equal to 4. And that is the solution for that example. So finally, we look at this other one. Now, this is a permutation uh, so yeah, a permutation problem with condition and recall I said whenever you have a condition You've got to be very careful to ensure that you capture that condition And now this problem says we should find the number of ways of arranging the letters of the word danger So that no vowel occupies the odd position So what that means is that we are going to have this the position the letters there are six of them there we can actually use the number uh, technique approach to do this. And we can also use definition of permutation to also do this. So let me use the first approach, the number approach. So I have, uh, this is five. So there are actually six. So the, we are going to check the possible number of uh, letters that can enter into any of this position. Now, from what we are told, the odd place is this this and this so we are told that none of the vowels which is a and e none of the vowels should enter in the odd position okay so they can enter into the even but then the other ones which are the consonants can enter into any of the positions okay so now whenever you are given a condition like this it is always good to start with the position where you have condition so what are we going to do? We try to fill in the conditional positions first. And so that means I have four consonants here. That the, the implication is that all four can be here. So I can have four here, four digits here. And then what about the second place? That's the, this, the third position, which is the second uh, odd place. Now, uh, remember that you are arranging the, the letters so they can repeat. So if I in all the four, all the four, which is D, 
uh, N, G, and R. Any of these four can enter here, and that's why we have four here. Now, but what of this position now? If one has entered here, then the remaining three. So in this position, you can only have three of the letters. And then in the last position here, the conditional place, that's the fifth place, only two can enter here. Okay, so now we are done with the conditional positions. So we now go to the remaining. So at this point, you have either of the vowel or the, the, the consonants can enter here. Now, but meanwhile, you have placed at least three of the consonants here. So you are only left with one at most. I'm, I'm not saying it, it has to be R. It can be any of them. But at most, it's only one consonant that can enter here. Now, together with the two vowels, so the total possibility of uh, letters that can enter here is two. and the, Sorry, three. And then here will be two, and here will be one. Okay, so the last thing you will now do is to multiply what you have here, multiply the, the individual outcomes. And so if you multiply this, we are going to have uh, 144 as our solution. Now, this is one of the ways we can take this. And another way we can follow is by definition. And what is it? We are told that uh, the vowels can only enter into the even positions. And there are three positions there, meaning that you are asked to put two things into three places. Two things into three places. So how can you arrange that? And that is simply equal to three permutation two. So you are permitting two things in three places. And that is simply equal to three factorials all over three minus two, which is one factorial. And that will give us three factorial, which is six. So we have gotten six to be the possible positions or the number of places that your vowels can stay, which is six. So now let's go to the other one, which is for the vowel, sorry, for the consonant. Now the consonants are four in number. I listed them earlier on. And if the vowels can only take three positions, that sorry, they can only take two positions because they are two at a time. So whenever you put them, even though you're arranging them in three possible places, but at each time they can only take two. So the remaining four will be for the, uh, what do you call it, the consonants. And so to get the number of possible arrangement for consonants, all you need to do is to take your four factorials. And if you take four factorials, that is equal to uh, 24. I just said it now. And therefore your total arrangement is going to be equal to your 6 multiplied by your 24. And if 6 multiplies 24, you are going to also get 144 as a solution. So either of the approach, the approaches that I have used here will work for this. But most times we prefer to use this number technique approach because uh, sometimes it gives you more, uh, you know, an easier approach to solving this problem. Right. So I said these were the things we are going to see. So this is where we end it for this video. Remember to always subscribe to our YouTube channel. If this is your first time or seeing our videos, please always like, share, comment on our videos, and we will always see you in our next content. Bye.